we say are not going to get. That's all 2014. That's, you might go on your phone yeah. and get it right on the paper. <coughs> and then those of you, you know, who, who got the folder, you got that on, on your folder anyway. Let me see. Everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to find the King Albert home for a minute, you all. Give me a few minutes. somebody that they're not that was occupying Germany and squandering its resources and they were invited to a permanent barbecue <laughs> party. Um, the same technology is, used, is being used and we'll go right to their own words to, to, to give you an idea of what all politicians in your so-called neighborhood leader guys already know but aren't discussing because they're paid not to talk about these things. Um, here we go. We try to bring this up a little bit. The military title to these operations is Silent Weapon, Silent Weapon, Executive Order 11490 King Alfred. This booklet contains vital excerpts from Executive Order 11490, October 19th, 1969. The King Alfred Plan, the Rex 84 Plan, Concentration Camps, Executive Order 11490, Expanded, Top Secret, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, Introductory Programming Manual, Operations Research, Technical Manual, TM SW 7905.1, United States of America Incorporated, it's Executive Order Number 11490, the Rex 84 plan of silent weapons for quiet wars has inadvertently been in the hands of the popularly accepted individuals calling themselves black leaders since the early 1970s. Many have spoken of these military operations, but few have logistically broken them down and disseminated that information to their alluring public. King Alpha plan implicates the true motives and reasons as to their control and compromise social and political positions why they do not publicly disseminate the same. One will take note that all the people mentioned in these government, military operations and plans, blacks, Indians, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, and poor whites, do not include any de jure national names or titles. All these words, tags, and nom de guerre are deceptive chattel brands coined by European social engineers and are designates as substitute pedigree parentage names, these were forced as nom de guerre appellations on the Aboriginal and Indigenous peoples of the Americas and thus passed upon their own discards. All people bearing these labels and tags are referred to as it in these texts. One common thread is evident, no nationality equals no rights and no human value. Anyway, let's go to some of the important pages Anyway, in widespread, continued, and coordinated racial disturbances in the United States, King Alfred, at the discretion of the president, is to be put into action immediately. Participating federal agencies, National Security Council, Department of Justice, Central Intelligence Agency, Department of Defense, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Department of Interior, participating state agencies under federal jurisdiction, National Guard units, ask the questions again, and state police, 
participating local agencies under federal jurisdiction, city police, county police. So when, when anyone thinks that your so-called politicians and community leaders don't know this information, you've got um, a mistaken concept. Infiltrated organizations under surveillance, one, black Muslims, two, student nonviolent coordinating committees, SNCC, three, Congress of Racial Equality, the Uhuru Movement, Group on Advanced Leadership, Goal, Freedom Now Party, the New Pan-African Movement, the National Urban League, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, mm -hmm. Committee on Racial and Religious Progress, Note, at the appropriate time to be designated by the president, the leader of some of these organizations are to be detained only when it is clear that they cannot prevent the emergency. Working with local police officials during the first critical hours, all other leaders are to be detained at once. Compiled list of minority leaders have been ready at the National Data Computer Center. It is necessary to use the minority leaders designated by the president in much the same manner in which we use minority members who are agents with central and federal and we cannot until there is no alternative reveal King Alfred in all its aspects. Minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. This move is not without precedent in American history. Attorney General, preliminary memo, pay particular attention to this paragraph. Preliminary memo, Department of Defense. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the street a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage. Does that sound like you came from someplace else? This is military. This is what all politicians already know about you. He will be a formidable enemy because, why? For he is bound to the continent, not country, continent, by heritage. By heritage. So where's your so-called African heritage? Yeah. Right here. And knows that political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. So what do you think these people want? I'm going to get, I'm moving the Trump gets like the most of any no damn word. <laughs> the greatest concentration of minority is in the deep south, the eastern seaboard, the Great Lakes region, and the west coast. So as you can see, politicians and scholars do not look at you the way you've been trained to look at yourself. Nor as your so-called marching, praying, keep hope alive, black leader, black nation guy has been telling you. And so you can see the compromission that Malcolm found out with military document tell you. And then the Pope got to tell you too because you just don't believe nobody else. <laughs> but he wouldn't be talking to the He wasn't under him. You understand? So let's go <clears throat> security. Let's, uh, these are concentration camps. We won't go into that right now. We're just going go to some more supports. Yes, the territory is broken up into regions. More concentration camps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the instruction to all of their people, including their so-called black leader guys. Now you understand why all of them must be Masons, too, and Eastern Stars that's in power, because you're standing on the rockway. That's why they all have a Moorish fez and don't tell you, and act like they don't know who the Moors are. Security. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, i.e. the engineering of social automation systems, silent weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social controls and destruction of human life, i.e. slavery and genocide. This manual is in itself an analog declaration of intent. Such a writing must be secured from public scrutiny, otherwise it might be recognized 
as a technically formal declaration of domestic war. Furthermore, whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without the full knowledge and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodology for economic conquest, it must be understood that a state, excuse me, that a state of domestic warfare exists between said persons or group of persons and the public. The solution of today's problems require an approach which is ruthlessly candid, with no agonizing over religious, moral, or cultural values. You have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity, and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity, Without a loss of discretion or humility, such virtues are exercised in your own best interest. Do not deviate from them. This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War. Remember this document was issued in October of 69. And this war started 25 years before that. See how out of sequence of time the people are? This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War, called the Quiet War, being conducted using subjective biological warfare fought with silent weapons. Wow. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies, and its weaponry. May 1979, number 74-1120. And so now you understand that SARS, Ebola, AIDS, etc., are all biological weapons. They do not exist in nature. And when you take your children to the John D. Rockefeller school system and they hit them with them latent viruses, their nanoviruses, to give them cancers and stuff later on. Since the John D. Rockefeller and the Rothschilds have taken over the, the medical industry, um, the cancer rate has increased one in two, whereas before it existed one in about 20 prior to their taking over. Everything, even the um, cancers, are virally transferred. They basically don't exist in nature. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, the people who think they were brought here on sardine ships are bound to this continent by heritage. Now you just discovered another Masonic secret. So you can understand how other nationals think of us when they come here and we start that black stuff and think we want to take our black problems to Africa <clears throat> type thing and you can kind of understand the difficulty they have dealing with us. They don't know what we're going to call ourselves this week and all that other stuff. <laughs> and we always talk about we know Allah and Jesus and Prophet Muhammad and they already know we're confused. So the Pope comes out with the civil orders to try to help straighten this stuff out because they're going to start to drop their bodies. Do you understand what I'm saying? Meaning they didn't matter done it to us and we may have punked out and given up, but the rest of the world ain't gave up. And that's what's going on. And just because we sold ourselves out and want to keep on calling human beings crayons, they ain't giving up their birthright because we gave ours up. Are we clear? Um, there's another part in here that I would like you to see. So you can understand the politics. Uh, also, their attitude towards you. Uh, let me see. Um, here, here you go. Let's, we'll read these three pages. I'm going to read these three, three pages on energy. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Are we clear? Remember, they're looking, at, they're looking at things from a real political position, not from the way they're training the people in these so-called school systems. Energy is recognized as key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy and social science, theoretically expressed as economics. Immediately you can see that the masses don't get economics.
Are we clear? Yes. All right. So, and expressed as that economics is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems, mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science, and the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. Now you see when the private commercial paper comes in and the people are convinced that it's money, it's bookkeeping entries. Now you understand why no debt really exists and you must declare your airship. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science and the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. All science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue. Who will be the beneficiary? In 1954, this was the issue of primary concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised, in view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation, a world of people who will not use their intelligence, are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such a people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace and tranqu tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy wealth of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. In order to implement this objective, it was necessary to create, secure, and apply new weapons, which as it turns out, were a class of weapons so subtle and sophisticated in their principle of operation and public appearance as to earn for themselves the name of silent weapons. Stakes on the table. It makes no obvious explosive noises causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life. Yet it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with daily social life, i.e. unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but because of the technical nature of the silent weapon, they cannot express their feelings in a rational way or handle the problems with intelligence. Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually to the public, the public adjusts, adopts to its presence, and learns to tolerate its, its encroachments on their lives until the pressure, psychological via, via economic, becomes too great and they crack up. See why our people are sick? They don't even know that war is being waged on. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. Theoretical introduction. Give me control over a nation's currency and I care not who makes its laws. Meyer, Amschel, Rothschild, 1743-1812. Today, silent weapons technology is an outgrowth of, pardon me, is an outgrowth of, pardon me, 
Simple idea discovered so simply expressed and uh, effectively applied by Tan, excuse me, they quoted by Mr. Ro uh, Meyer Rothschild. Mr. Rothschild discovered the missing passive component of economic theory known as economic inductance. He, of course, did not think of his discovery in the, uh, these 20th century terms. And to be sure, mathematical analysis had to wait for the second industrial revolution, the rise of the theory of mechanics and electronics, and finally, the invention of the electronic computer before it could be effectively applied in the control of world economy. General energy concepts. In the study of energy systems, there always appear three elementary uh, concepts. These are potential energy, kinetic energy, and energy dissipation. And corresponding to these concepts, there are three um, idealized, essentially pure physical counterparts called passive components. One, in the science of physical mechanics, the phenomena of potential energy is associated with a physical property called elasticity or stiffness and can be represented by a stretched <coughs> spring. In electronic science, the potential energy is stored in a capacitor instead of a spring. This property is called capacitance instead of elas ela elasticity or stiffness. Two, in the science of physical mechanics, the phenomena of kinetic energy is, is associated with a physical property called inertia or mass and can be represented by mass or flywheel in motion. In electronic science, kinetic energy is stored in an inductor in a magnetic field instead of a mass. This property is called inductance. In the science of physical me uh, mechanics, the phenomena of energy dissipation is associated with a physical property called friction or resistance and can be represented by a dash cut or other device which converts system energy into heat. In electronic science, dissipation of energy is performed by an element called either a resistor or a conductor, and the term resistor be, uh, being the one generally used to express the concept of friction and the term conductor being generally used to describe a more ideal device, i.e. wire, employed to convey electronic energy efficiently from one location to another. And the property of a resistance or conductor is measured as either resistance or conductance reciprocals. In economics, these three energy concepts are associated with economic capacitance, economic conductance, and economic inductance. I won't go any further than that, so I wanted you to see, basically, how they're looking at you, just like they should be in the matrix as a machine. They study you as a biological machine and approach it absolutely from that perspective. Whereas if you're sitting around thinking about your religious beliefs and your emotions and the morals, automatically you're already lost because you don't know what you're dealing with. And so when you're looking at this, you're looking at the World Global Trust that was set up after the Spanish Inquisition after the fall of Red House. They're looking for transferring your energy, i.e., to their estate. And this is even with the social attacks of the social energy is why many, many of our relationships don't work because we're attacked under them, under the Christian black codes, and don't know we're under psychological attack. And we start blaming each other because our relationships don't work and you're actually under psychological psychic attack. So you can't counter it if you don't know what you're dealing with. And this is what's wrong with the so-called black community, who really ain't black, but agree to be black. Do you understand? All right. Again, when you when you see that, when you read, when you go back to the um, as I showed you earlier in the um, in the um, reversion or statement, you understand the history and what's really going on, and what you're declaring is that you're not agreeing to be shorty. See, because long as long as you as an heir make no rebuttal, it's called tacit acquiescence. And they're accepting that you abandon your estate, even though they know that you didn't. And then they're accusing your mothers of selling you with the birth certificate and selling her eggs with the marriage certificate. And then they make bonds on it, put it on the stock market. And that's what's been running their debt since the Civil War. And then the reverend's been in between, acting like 
The marriage certificate was for Jesus and God, but actually it's a bond on the eggs in her fallopian tubes. Wow. Mm. And he gets a kickback. Talk about Jesus. And you don't suspect them. And everything they're doing is for their own interest. And of course, your, your congressional records is their real oath to the Pope. And so since it's documented, then, they, then this is what they're saying. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, because if you can know God in heaven and the dark side of the moon, certainly you should know how fundamental government work. Therefore, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And that if you don't know your rights, you don't have it. And you also don't deserve it. That's the position that they hold. Um, thank you. Is it one? I don't know what it is. Um, so, let's see. Let's see what I find. So, let's Now, this is um. Let's see if I can find. I'll put this in here. I think it's in there. Now this, all right, here's the uh, General Education Board, and this is the John D. Rockefeller. When you send your children to school, and this is their policy, this is their policy and philosophy for your children. Read that, you all. I'll take a sandwich. <laughs> Somebody read that for me. Oh, I read it. Good. Philosophy of the General Education Board. J.D. Rockefeller and Frederick T. Gates in 1902. In our dreams, we have limitless resources and the people yield themselves the perfect what's that? Docility. docility to our living <coughs> game. The percent nice way of saying mind control present Good. education uh, conventions fade from their minds and unhampered by tradition we work our own goodwill upon the grateful and responsive rule folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers or men of learning or men of science. Mm -hmm. We have not we have not to rise up from among them authors, editors, poets, or men of letters. Mm -hmm. We shall not search for embryo, great artists, painters, musicians, no lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen, of whom we have an ample supply. The task we set before ourselves is very simple as well as very beautiful. One, to turn or to train these people as we find them to a perfectly ideal life just where they are. So we will organize our children and teach them to do in a perfect way the things their fathers and mothers are doing in an imperfect way in the homes, in the shops, and on the farm. General Education Board, occasional papers, Number one, General Education Board, New York, 1913, page six. No, those are the years, the corresponding years. Mm -hmm. Now, 
when our people keep sending their children to these schools and then complaining about their handicap education, is it accidental? No. No. Mm -mm. no. This is the philosophy page of the General Education Board and the General Education Board that comes, that is now the Board of Education, is now a part of the Rockefeller Foundation. Mm -hmm. At what point do these people think that these people had any goodwill for their children then or now? Mm -hmm. Any comments? with a historically black college. No comments? Really Is it obvious? Yes. Excuse me. I had a question. Give so, 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 brother Mike so, so. Here it is. Give him Mike so. Yeah. So after seeing this for the first time myself, is it part of the program? Is this why they, um, how do I say, is this, is this one of the reasons why they sanction you for not sending your kids to school? Because they don't have the ability to um, to stunt you, basically. If you if you if you measure our communities, most of our people, most of our people, get a microphone. If you study our communities, you'll see that most of our people, our children in high school, most of them have about a fourth grade reading level. And in college, most of them have just simply a junior high school reading and grammar level. And yet they, they're given degrees. Of course, they put out on the world and they can't compete because they can do what? Perfectly, their imperfect education and logically can't compete. And it's by design. There it is, the General Education Board's philosophy. That's their philosophy. So when these people be starting these um, parents' meetings and stuff and talking about the children and self-esteem and all the rest of ridiculous, empty conversations that they have in the name of their fake spirituality and open up with prayer and talk about their love for their children, they don't have the respect for themselves or their children to even read the philosophy page that they keep delivering their children to. And then when things go wrong in the community, they want to blame the mystery devil, as usual. Do you think the world sits around and plays with us because we keep playing these games with the, with the priesthood, with our own babies? When this stuff is documented all over the damn place? So you can kind of understand the difficulty that other nationals have when they come to North America and they get the concept, which is incorrect, that these so-called black people just don't want nothing. Because if they know God, Jesus, Allah, and all this stuff, they well, certainly must know who they're delivering their children to. They can certainly go to the congressional record and see the, 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 the clergy's real oath to the Pope and not to Jesus. They can go to the Bible and see that the one they call Jesus had hair like lambs, skin like burnt breast. He wasn't that Roman sitting up on the walls in them spy centers that they keep calling houses of God. So. So far, the world don't have too much compassion for these people that's, you know, that keep on claiming to be so spiritual, but actually manifest as the most extreme levels of hypocrisy and destruction in the communities. And then blaming the mystery devil when it's very clear that weight wars are being waged on them. And instead of talking the reality of what's happening to them, they sit around talking about colors and racism. And these are war policies. They're documented. They're not even hidden. And then our poor children are just victims because we keep delivering them to them. And then letting them shoot them up with nanoviruses. And then the young girls, what, 20 and 30, and they start getting breast cancer and a whole bunch of other kind of stuff. And we sit around and talk about salvation and a whole bunch of hypocritical things that ain't existing in the community. Then the children get out there in the life and can't compete. Work ten times as hard and get ten times less. Mm -hmm. And you got degrees on the wall. You know, but they ain't worth the thermos that turns the heat on. <laughs> 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 
And then we won't go into debt for it too. That don't damn exist. Somebody told me today I was being scammed. Yeah, huh? Say again. Someone told me today I was being scammed. Like I got I got locked up in uh for a matter that I didn't make it to. Oh. I hadn't put my paperwork in to proceed me. Mm -hmm. um, so today they come pick me up as soon as I leave my my, my where I domicile. Uh -huh. um, I got my little son on my shoulder. He's two. So you can imagine how that affected him seeing these people come. Yeah, the trauma. Right. And keep in mind when you when so, you were looking at that, keep in mind Clearfield. Remember when we keep and, and keep this yeah, in mind. See, I, I told you, I'm like, what what gives you authority? No, no, you won't say what gives you authority. You won't even ask him that. Mm -hmm. You won't even ask him that. But when I was what you gonna up, do, what you gonna do is go after their bond, including the mayor, including everyone else in line, you go after their bond, you do suits on them in their private capacity. And then one of them, they're detectives or whatever you might want to call it. <coughs> they want to come to me and tell me um, I'm, being, I'm being scammed. Well, I told him, I said, if you want to say something, you can say it to me. I don't have nothing to say to you. You yeah. tell me what you want. You go after your bonds, all of them. And now, understand, they all have to dump, write this down. Dunn and Brad Street number. They got Dunn and Brad Street number. The what street number? Dunn and Brad Street numbers. Okay, hold on. And all of them carry what is called surety bonds to do business at all at North America. Wells Fargo. And travelers is usually the carrier of them bonds. You make a lodial cost schedule claims on every minute that you were kidnapped. And now what was the first thing you said? What, uh, Dunn and Bradstreet, D-U-N and Bradstreet numbers, because they're doing business and they're unlawful. Back to the post letter, right? Huh? Mm -hmm. he, he, did, he owns them. And even when you're you're dealing with um, so-called mortgages, etc., right? Mm -hmm. See this concept? It's a, a fiduciary request for reconveyance, right? And this is this is in the same nature of the uh, uh, reversion. You're an heir and a fine. See, you're a natural person, exhalation, and straw, Aboriginal indigent, right? Appropriate persona and not pro se, sujuris, right? Suheritus, and sole proprio, you own your own land, non-domestic, non-resident, non-subject, nationality, right? And you won't go after their bonds. But this stuff, this is stuff you already have. But um, this concept is consistent. You must be consistent in your understanding what the nature of this is. And you're dealing with this, whether you're dealing with banks, whether you're dealing with all, all them persons claiming to be government, etc. Because you know that they're not. Right? So, You all you already know the nature of uh, now this the Clearfield, keep in mind this Clearfield case of 1942 is based on what we went through earlier with the coup d'etat. And this is the Clearfield company, a trust company in Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, the check that there was in, in controversy was right at the um, at the mint, right here in Philadelphia. It was a, a, a check for twenty dollars and twenty four cents, something like that, right? And the Clearfield Trust Company, you know, on 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 uh, on principle, you know, uh, um, went to court on this because it was an issue of latches with a with a stolen check, you know, that was forged, and the United States Corporation went after the trust company. And they, they fought them on this principle. 
And see, so, so the Clearfield Trust Company versus the United States, right, governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen where corporate, private, corporate, commercial paper, remember that, private, corporate, commercial paper, which are what? Federal Reserve notes and securities, checks is concerned for purposes of suit. Such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. So they kidnapped you, didn't they? Mm -hmm. yes. right. they did. So your argument is? Hmm. See what your argument is? Yes. Now, when you're dealing with the Morton Science Temple of America and you deal with the Constitution and bylaws and the Grand Chiefs and Assistant Grand Chiefs, the moderator and the chairman, they're put in power to enforce law, to make law and enforce law. What are they supposed to be doing in our community? Enforcing that Constitution. And why do these people keep getting away with what they're getting away with? Because we have not been enforcing the law. And our concepts have been incorrect. And we've been constantly diverted with false concepts and not really dealing with the issue of enforcing the Constitution and treaties to which these people are bound. Give me your question, Ben. I'm trying to understand it, but um, say, I guess this is Sister Mari Bay's question, beloved Taj to repeat. Can we please arrange a house of reawakening minds at the Malvo, M A U V all caps M A U V O Resource Center at Mecca, Morocco? I'm not sure whether she means you, or whether she means one of these. Well, Mecca is Chicago. That's where they are. Oh, well, that's Chicago. I'm not sure if they're asking for you to come there, or do they want to do it? It's a real a house of real wicked money. Because this is the house. Well, of we want to go there or something. I guess they're, I guess they're asking for um, house of real wicked money to come to to Mecca. Yeah, which we they talk about before. Yes. We'll make arrangements after I've got to go to Texas. <laughs> and um, she's late. We'll try to get deep too. <laughs> but concept, you must understand that the whole political operations at North America has been the theft of your birthright. The way you've been looking at things, you've got to rearrange your frame of mind so that you project a different energy. They are obligated to the treaty and the Constitution and all the obligations related to it. We've been arguing the wrong arguments. We've been looking for process within venues that are not what they have been presented to be. Therefore, when we enter and make the argument, you're already declared incompetent. Oh, the clear. Thus, the, the principle of when we opened up tonight, when I went to the reverse of the statement, which is why I went to that statement. Because it covers the nature of what you're dealing with across the board, whether you're dealing with tickets, so-called policemen encounters on the street, mortgage foreclosures, credit claims, student loans, all of those things, there's not one of those things that you're really indebted to. They was really supposed to discharge it. And as a matter of fact, you're supposed to sign for yourself. What about that? Exactly. exactly. Now, because they, what they did is kidnap you. Now you got a kidnap change. You got a kidnap charge on them, peonage, piracy, violation of international laws. And all you gotta do is um, start going, going for their bonds. Now, would you, when you make charges on their bonds, this is what occurs. Uh, even if it's not litigated, what occurs is that um, travelers of uh, insurance will be calling the city commissioners. Typically, those names come up more than one time. If they were going to get some uh, um, a, a position, you know, a raise or something like that, a different position, that's already off the table. And they're going to raise their bond covers. Usually they have cover bonds. They should have individual bonds. 
but they usually have cover bonds, and what's going to happen is their bonds go up. Make another charge, their bonds, even before litigation, their bonds go up, and any more associate, their bonds go up, and what happens is, it is on that basis that sooner or later somebody said rules. That's how you start hurting them. But you sit around arguing, talking about racism and all that stupid stuff, and marching and praying, you're wasting your time. You know what I'm Plus, they would use it as an opportunity because they always, they always put provocateurs. They try to encourage the black leader guys to get you out there marching. And they'll put sound machines on you. They do, um, they'll do virus drops. Um, what else they do? They do radiations. Uh, and then they make excuses of hurting a few people. So when they're doing the marching and prayings, you go the other direction. Beat them with the pen. The pen is mightier than the sword, that's why you're giving this information. Now logically, it's in, our, it's in our interest to be organized, if you understand. That's what the Morris Science Temple is for. Now so some of you are gonna go into the movements with your eyes wide open and clean them venues up, but they belong to you. Because they were supposed to be doing this stuff 60 years ago. Unfortunately, you already know what the infiltration and sellout is. But if you have the information, you can tell who's who by their works. By their works, you shall know them. You know, so if you know the history, if you know the divine constitutional bylaws issued by the Lady, you see the divine warning by the prophet for the nation, you see the nation, the, the message to America, etc. it will give you a whole platform. You go into international law and look at the correlations, and you'll see it's already laid out for you. But the problem that we have, we have been, we have been uh, um, <coughs> docile and passive. That's what our problem has been. And we're looking for programs when we have the duty and responsibility of heirs to enforce the covenants, which are simply contracts. They're just like heirship, meaning that if you're an heir to an estate and you don't speak up, and if you act other than an heir, you're declared by your own actions incompetent and not descendable. And our people don't know that that's what's taking place. And it's not by accident, it's by design. And people who should have been informing you have been playing with you and robbing you along with the European, pretending to be uh, working for your good. And this is why I can probably say, be careful, Morris. Some of your own brothers and sisters wearing turbans and fezzes will be trying to put you back into slavery. Mm. Now, if you don't know this history that we talked about, you can get caught up in how you feel, who you like and who you don't like, when that should not even enter your mind. You should understand, you measure everything by principles. But first, you must know what those principles are. A lack of knowledge will not excuse you. Because after all, we above all people on earth planet have claimed to be the most spiritual, the most religious, the most Afrocentric, the most connecting people. How dare you not know your bloodline and talk trash? Claim the love of God you do not see, and love not your brothers and sisters who you see every day, nor the pedigree of your own estate. So the world is not forgiving you, although we keep making excuses, you know. Go ahead. Do you, uh, do you know anything about what's like the oldest bloodline that's in existence today? Ancient Canaan Moabite, that's it. What, what blood type is that? It's not blood type, it's you. Okay. They all came from you, so what's the point? And it was, this is the point that we get caught up in. We get, we get let them start talking about bloodlines, and they all, all the human family came from us. Every human on planet Earth is traced back to the more white woman simply called the African woman. She's the mother of all. Now, what's up? What's up? Well, no, what's up is for us to stop damn lying. And stop dealing with this patriarchal crap that the popes and them set up and go back to the principles of our ancient mothers and fathers and honor our mothers and fathers and reclaim our lost estate. Claim your nationality. Nationality comes from nativity. Nativity comes from your belly button. That comes from uh, mama. Mm -hmm. It's called inheritance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some, brother. Yeah, some people, I think it was, uh, some people say, oh, it's original blood type. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, that's what I was asking. Uh, yes, now they can say that. They can say that. All right. Now, I'll tell you this. 
Anything that's human on this on this planet is from us and the monkey, which is the Negro. Now you got original, or what you call aboriginal, and you got occidental, which is hybrid. And the issue that you're arguing, they don't give a damn what blood you got. <laughs> your hair is good. You want a peanut butter sandwich? You better, be, you better rub knowledge your mother. Yeah. See, I got the green blood because it's really, uh, see, you know, we, we, we fall for anything. See, I came from, see, I was from the east side of Pennsylvania because my blood type traces to the Horn of Africa on the left side of the Nile. We, we, we're so stupid. No, we are. We fall for anything that diverts us from reality. Peanut butter. Hmm? You like peanut butter? Hmm? I, I, love peanut butter. I was gonna say we should all bring Taj, Brother Taj, some gourmet peanut butter. I got some still on them. Okay. Okay. Hey, well, 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 peanut butter in all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so. And I'm not knocking that, but what I'm saying to you is that when you start, when you know the real history, you can see how and why we're always diverted with arguments that are of no worth. <laughs> Not just that. Even when they talk about the phenotypes, right? Like in that, have a woman sitting in here with 11 children, right? Separate them children and send them to the agencies to get their tests. And they'll have them come from different places <laughs> with different blood types and different payments. Brothers and sisters from the same mother and father, and we keep falling for this crap. You understand what I'm saying? To you? This airship. And amongst them, we're talking about who's the lightest and the darkest. They pull the crap. We need to wake up, stop playing games, understand the real world. The whole politics of the modern world is based on the Spanish Inquisition, fall of the Red House, the Europeans converting the estate of the Moroccan Empire on, on to the Constantinians under the guise of Christian conquest, and then later what's called the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885, Berlin, Germany, where they divided up the Moorish Empire between the European nations under the guise of the Ottoman Empire, which is the last part of the Sardinian Empire, of the Moorish dynasties. That's the fact. And it's your state. And if you want to sit around and talk about, I got the green blood. <laughs> you, you, know, you go ahead and do that if you want to fall for that game. But that's the politics. That's the politics. And guess what? You go in your American Heritage Dictionary, right? Matter of fact, there's it right here. American Heritage Dictionary <coughs> on the English language high school. Excuse me. High school. Look up black. Go on there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you to the back. I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you the game that they play. That they play with these with these scholars, uh, so-called black scholars, and how they disinherit these people. Now, and this is also now remember this, how many of y'all seen the movie Malcolm X? How many of you seen the part where the minister or addict, I'll tell you what he was in that. The addict shared with Malcolm his dictionary. How many saw the part? What is the concept that you got? The concept that you got that he was improving his vocabulary, weren't you? Yeah. No. He was giving him an, what is called an Edamon degree that all priests have. Anybody in power gives an Edamon degree. What you see in the movie is not what's really going on. This is a third grade Edamon degree. Black, look up black. Black, adjective. Get him white, please. Black, adjective. So now it's an adjective, right? Mm -hmm. How many parts of speech? Third grade ground. Eight parts of speech. What's an adjective? I'm describing now. Get in the mic. Get in the mic. Get, get. 
What's an adjective? Descriptive. Something that describes an animal. An adjective is a modifier. Uh, an adjective is a modifier. What's a noun? A person, place, or thing. Mm-hmm. So that's an adjective. <laughs> Can it be a person? No. no. So therefore, if it's used to, to, uh, to apply to a, a living man, woman, or child, it's pejorative. It describes. Now, is the complexion of the people black? No. 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 Somebody said it is, but what is black? So right. now go into the bottom of that and give me the part, give, give, give the etymology. Do you see M-E down there? For Middle English? Yeah, of course it's Middle English. <laughs> I see M-E. All right, now put the timeline on it. Third grade grammar. Middle English, 1100, 1500. Approximately, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, 1100, 1500, black. <clears throat> Can there be some ancient black gods of Egypt? <laughs> what does a third grade scholar know? That somebody writes that book and presents that to him or her. They're miseducating them, aren't they? Mm -hmm. With the assumption that they can't read. Mm -hmm. Now, some people have that problem, don't they? Yeah. Now, go down to the bottom of black and you'll see its etymology. You'll see B H E L. Do you see it down the bottom? Yes. Go on the back in the appendix and go look up B-H-E-L, Veal, its origin. Go on the back in the appendix. Remember, third grade grammar. Get in the mic, please. B H E L. Bill. Bill. Important derivatives are blue, bleach, black, blaze, blemish, blind or blended, blind and blend, blonde. Mm hmm. Blank, What's that got to do with dark? Blacked, lush. White, shining, light colors. What's that got to do with dark? Nothing. Is these people of more descent black people? No. Seems like somebody can't read, or either somebody's deliberately miseducating some people, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now you see why some people say, don't worry about the little picking in these, they will never compete because they can't read. That's a basic third grade grammar etymon degree that all priests and all scholars have. Without going into the linear entry, I'll just show you simply how people are miseducated. Can't damn read. Third grade grammar. Anyway, thank you all for coming out to House of Reawakening Minds, which I could share this with you, but it's cold anyway. <laughs> I, I want to say that there were um, a lot of people uh, on here that I, I noticed even some that um, did not claim, don't claim their Moorish heritage or nationality. They don't even, may not even know, but they were fascinated by the um, teaching. I see some of the comments, and so I think this is a good thing to do live because where they may be afraid to come to the house of real wicked and I understand. They can sit in the comfort of their home and get. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. I understand. You go into history and you'll see the, the dilemma of the Moriscos. The dilemma of the Moriscos are Moors who either sold out or out of fear, because they fear the Romans more than they fear God, Jesus, Allah, and the prophets, although they always claim they fear only God, they really fear only that European who is called the Negro God. And therefore, that fear is understood, because they have a habit of murdering, going to and fro the earth, devouring nations, killing nationality and murdering the people and claiming their estates. That's an established fact. However, go back to black in the, in the child's dictionary. Go back to black in the child's dictionary. And look at the compound word, third grade grammar again. And you'll see a compound word. And it will be a noun it's called black or more. And that's two words put together to make another word to hide and write in the dictionary. It's also in the, in, in the 
Charles Dixner, can you read that, please? He said, look up Blackmore. <clears throat> right beneath black. Because they'll show you how the words are morphed and transferred into language. Into the mic, please. Black or more. Please speak clearly. Black or more. Offensive. A dark-skinned person. You're going to get the part of speech. A part of speech is noun. It has their italics. So noun is not an adjective, is it? So noun is proper for a person placing an idea, correct? What you have is a compound word, third grade, elementary school dictionary for children. Now read it and break it down as you see it. It says offensive, a dark-skinned person except a person from Northern Africa. Especially. Oh, especially a person from Northern Africa. Stand corrected. Oh, shit. Unknown origin. Plus they know the origin. More. So therefore, these people of African descent who think they're black and Negroes are Moors, aren't they? Does it separate the, the adjective off of the noun? Yes. You, you're not speaking loud into the mic, people. Yes, it does separate the uh, adjective from the noun. Describe the spelling and the structure of the spelling. It's all lowercase. Um, black. Well, black and uppercase and small case or more, which is the proper noun. Is it clear there? Spell it, please, for the people. B L A C K. All even letters. A. Which means it's a non begear. And then more. M O O R. That's not how it spells. Capital M. <coughs> What's these people that drink their black? Is it in Charles Dictionary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seems like some people can't read, right? Yes. They don't know the parts of speech either, do they? No. Is it understandable why, why other people have problems with these people here who dishonor their mothers and fathers but they want the benefit of civilization and they get pissed when they don't get it? But they're going to tell you about gods and devils and Nibiru, and the 13th planet, and what's on the dark side of the moon. And they wonder why the rest of the supply world don't take them serious. Then they buy and sell with the mark and the number of another man's name, and they want to run around complaining how they, why they don't own nothing. And think these principles of nativity don't apply to them because they're specially saved. Jesus made them, didn't make nobody else type thing. Think the world gonna sit around and feel sorry for them? I don't think so. Anyway, thank you all for coming out to the House of Reawakening Minds. Thank you, Doc, Dr. Nayela, for maintaining the program and the platform for the work you've done, even though you've been sacrificing a lot to do it, as we all have to some degree. But we want to give you special thanks. And we also want to give you special thanks for your continued work and your poetry, which is very inspiring. And those of you who haven't got her book, I know she's coming out with another one too. <laughs> but anyway, do yourself a favor and get her book. And thank you all for coming out. Make some questions, write them down for the next time when we come out. And get your concepts clear. Peace. <laughs> Which they're not going to get. Mm -hmm. That's all, all 2014. That's, you might go on your phone yeah. and get it right on your <coughs> And then those of you, you know, who, who got the folder, you got that on, on your folder anyway. Let me see.
It's long. All right, it's on, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to finally continue out with home for a minute, you all. Give me a few minutes. Um, we're going to. Um, here we go. Now this is military. This is military operations, King Alfred, and this is based on all the technology that was gathered after World War II, with some people that was claiming to be somebody that they're not, that was occupying Germany and squandering its resources, and they were invited to a permanent barbecue <laughs> party. Um, the same technology is used is being used. And we'll go right to their own words mm. to, to, to give you an idea of what all politicians in your so-called neighborhood leader guys already know but aren't <laughs> discussing because they're paid not to talk about these things. Um, here we go. Let me try to bring this up a little bit. The military title to these operations is Silent Weapon, Silent Weapon, Executive Order 11490 King Alfred. This booklet contains vital excerpts from Executive Order 11490, October 19th, 1969, the King Alfred Plan, the Rex 84 Plan, Concentration Camps, Executive Order 11490, Expanded, Top Secret, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, Introductory Programming Manual, Operations Research, Technical Manual, TMSW 7905.1, United States of America Incorporated. It's Executive Order Number 11490, the Rex 84 Plan of Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars has inadvertently been in the hands of the popularly accepted individuals calling themselves black leaders. Since the early 1970s, many have spoken of these military operations, but few have logistically broken them down and disseminated that information to their alluring public. King Alfred Plan implicates the true motives and reasons as to their control and compromised social and political positions, why they do not publicly disseminate the same. One will take note that all the people mentioned in these government Military operations and plans, blacks, Indians, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, and poor whites do not include any de jure national names or titles. All these words, tags, and nom de guerre are deceptive chattel brands coined by European social engineers and are designates as substitute pedigree parentage names. These were forced as nom de guerre appellations on the Aboriginal and indigenous peoples of the Americas and thus passed upon their own discards. All people bearing these labels and tags are referred to as it in these texts. One common thread is evident, no nationality equals no rights and no human value. Anyway, let's go to some of the important pages. Anyway, in widespread, continued, and coordinated racial disturbances in the United States, King Alfred at the discretion of the President, is to be put into action immediately. Participating federal agencies, National Security Council, Department of Justice, Central Intelligence Agency, Department of Defense, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Department of Interior, participating state agencies under federal jurisdiction, National Guard units, ask the questions again, and state police, Participating local agencies under federal jurisdiction, city police, county police. So when, when anyone thinks that your so-called politicians and community leaders don't know this information, you've got um, a mistaken concept. Infiltrated organizations under surveillance. One, black Muslims. Two, student nonviolent coordinating committees, SNCC. Three, Congress of Racial Equality, the Uhuru Movement, Group on Advanced Leadership, Goal, Freedom Now Party, the New Pan-African Movement, the National Urban League, 
the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, mm -hmm. Committee on Racial and Religious Progress. Note, at the appropriate time to be designated by the president, the leader of some of these organizations ought to be detained only when it is clear that they cannot prevent the emergency. Working with local police officials during the first critical hours, all other leaders are to be detained at once. Compiled list of minority leaders have been ready at the National Data Computer Center. It is necessary to use the minority leaders designated by the president in much the same manner in which we use minority members who are agents with central and federal, and we cannot until there is no alternative reveal King Alfred in all its aspects. Minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. This move is not without precedent in American history. Attorney General, preliminary memo, pay particular attention to this paragraph. Preliminary memo, Department of Defense. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the street a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage. Does that sound like you came from someplace else? This is military. This is what all politicians already know about you. He will be a formidable enemy because, why? For he is bound to the continent, not country, continent, by heritage. By heritage. So where's your so-called African heritage? Yeah. Right here. And knows that political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. So what do you think these people want? I'm gonna get, I'm moving the chunkus. Like the lost of any no damn word. <laughs> the greatest concentration of minority is in the deep south, the eastern seaboard, the Great Lakes region, and the west coast. So as you can see, politicians and scholars do not look at you the way you've been trained to look at yourself. Nor as your so-called marching, praying, keep hope alive, black leader, black nation guys been telling you. And so you can see the compromission that Malcolm found out with military document tell you. And then the Pope got to tell you too because you just don't believe nobody else. But he wouldn't be talking if the heat wasn't under him. You understand? So let's go <clears throat> security. Let's uh, These are concentration camps. We won't go into that right now. I'm just going go to some more supports. Yes, the territory is broken up into regions. More concentration camps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the instruction to all of their people, including their so-called black leader guys. Now you understand why all of them must be Masons, too, and Eastern Stars that's in power, because you're standing on the rockway. That's why they all have a Moorish fez and don't tell you and act like they don't know who the Moors are. Security. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, i.e. the engineering of social automation systems, silent weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without